Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Weather Center. We're doing a hard segment. I'm fresh back from Sarasota Beach. It has been a busy weekend, but an amazing weekend. I am very burnt, to say the least, but I wanted to get on here because, as promised, if there were things beginning to trend in the upward direction, we'd be right back here on the Weather Center to talk about it. So with that being said, we're going to get right into it. But first, if you are brand new to the channel or been floating around from time to time in between our live discussions, please consider clicking that subscribe button. Let's nudge that like button and share this information out there because I do think, as we have been discussing in previous live discussions... This is likely going to be the Atlantic Basin's first attempt at a named storm. The first name on the list would be Andrea. And today, and even over the last couple days, we've seen a bit more of a coherent signal to track. Just a signal for now. We're still about 7 to 10 days out, if not just beyond that, before our MJO comes over. All of our atmospheric pieces come into proper alignment to allow for a wave or something near the Central American landmass to start to get going. So with that being said, let's get you over to National Hurricane Center's home. Homepage. What's happening now is the disturbance in the eastern Pacific has a 2090 split. We are code red out there just off the southern coast of Mexico with a 90% shot. This becomes at least a tropical depression over the next seven days. 48 hours, we're up to a 20% shot. It does seem like as convection begins to further organize off the coastline of South America and Central America, we will start to see that lift towards the west and northwest and probably become an invest within the next 48 hours at a maximum. I want to say we will have an area of investigation within the next couple of days. Hopefully before Wednesday, we can start to get those hurricane models cranking on this bad boy. Over in the Atlantic side of things, obviously there's not much happening just yet, but I'll go ahead and pull up my Epic Pen very quickly before we get any further. Pardon my typos there. I'm doing this off the cuff. I literally just walked in the house a little bit ago. Let's get the Epic Pen up. And if you notice... Nothing currently, but I'm going to draw in where it is I do think we're going to have to watch. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Let's take you through some of the information I have here. So first and foremost, on our full disk satellite, you can see off the Pacific Monsoonal Trough, coming off of South America over Panama and Costa Rica right now, we have lots of thunderstorm activity. And it does look like this general area here is where we're going to be watching very closely for that shrinkage, that consolidating, that tightening up of our center of an area of low pressure. Outside of that, though, if you notice, the Caribbean itself and the Gulf is quiet. We're up here in Central Florida where we're getting a lot of sea breeze action. There's been some severe thunderstorms happening on a day-to-day -day basis. We've once again gone 0 to 100, it feels like, in terms of our rainy season being no, go, go, no, go, and so on. But this is where we're going to be watching for certain. I'll take you right on to the European model. These are your tropical cyclone probabilities, and we'll go right to the date range we've been discussing. This is the second through the ninth and bam right out of the gate you can see a very promising signal of something trying to manifest itself over the southern caribbean into the western caribbean hugging the coastline of central america and the yucatan before potentially pulling into the central and eastern gulf you go a little beyond that to the ninth through the 16th of june and that signal only continues to increase with a little bit of the euro favoring the bay of campeche as a matter of fact so this is a very interesting setup that we have going on there's a couple of key moving parts, no pun intended, that we'll have to monitor as we go over the next seven days. Within the next week, between now and next Sunday, I would say, we'll have a much better feel on if something's going to organize. There are some fail modes with this still in effect. Believe it or not, the euro is a little bit more aggressive in spinning up a low pressure, a consolidated low pressure, as opposed to, say, the GFS. Even the European model's AI counterpart is starting to show an area of disorganized slop, more or less. Whether that's classifiable as a name system regardless it's still showing a little bit of that run-to-run -run consistency with the euro ifs the operational euro the gfs and our other long-range ensembles Here's a look at our tropical depression probabilities for the sake of time. I just have the loop stopped right here between the dates of January, not January, I'm sorry, June 3rd to about June 5th. And if you notice, we have some pretty decent signals here of something lifting up right where we've been talking into the central and eastern Gulf near the Florida Peninsula from the boot of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle. So very interesting. This has been steadily upticking for the last 48 hours. That's why I wanted to jump on here and get a video out to you all, even if it be very short and very fast paced, since like I said, I literally was brainstorming this on the road back from Sarasota, and I wasn't going to leave you all hanging. Here's the latest for our European model ensembles, the spaghetti plots, and if you notice, right 
out of the gate again, right as we were predicting, we've been talking about this is the 2nd of June, the 3rd of June, the 4th, which is where I'd been thinking from the 4th to the 15th is when it might be game time. And right as expected there, you can see the ensembles beginning to really pick up on an area of low pressure. Nothing crazy. I honestly don't think this has a very high ceiling. It is June after all. Now granted, barrel, I always flash back to barrel and the lessons we learned with that Category 5 system. But I want to add the disclaimer on top of that, kind of like a disclaimer sandwich there. I'm not ever at all expecting a Category 5 out of this, and I want to make that very clear. My preliminary early prediction, if we can get something off the ground quite literally, would be a mid to high end tropical storm if we win the tropical lottery out there. And if you notice, the Euro is right on par with that, with our deepest members being in within that 980 to 999 millibar level. But regardless, that is a very healthy signal. That is about one-fourth to one-fifth of our ensemble suite. The 50-some-odd models are the ensemble members of the European model showing something in the central to eastern Gulf, right about where we've been discussing. I'll switch us over to our GEFS ensembles, and at that same date and time, there's the fourth right there. Something begins to take off, albeit very sporadic. The signal is a little all over the place because we're going to be trying to pinpoint. And what I think is happening is we have the MJO pulse coming across. We we had that standing wave indication that it might get kind of hung up between the eastern Pacific Basin, the Caribbean and the Gulf, the southeast United States. We have that area of tropical wave action that's moving through the MDR right now. Not the first one, but the second one that has just plopped off. It's very elongated, but it's moving through the MDR right now. And very similar to a few of the tropical waves we saw last hurricane season, I think it's going to work its way into this area. And if the shear, if the dry air off the continental U.S. does decide to let it play ball, that's when we'll start to see something organized. There are a couple of, you know, aggressive members here. There's two of them, one going into about Corpus Christi in Brownsville, Texas, another one going over the Bahamas of that 960 to 979 millibar range. But again, the key takeaway here is we have enough for a moderate to strong tropical storm in that region. This has also been something that's been catching my attention because we all know the Euro operational model is usually extremely frugal with this stuff. But if you scroll through time right there, you can see a very disorganized, sloppy tropical cyclone moving right on up to the immediate west of Tyndall Air Force Base, Panama City, the Apalachicola Bay Area, and to the immediate east of Pensacola. Maybe moving right over top as well, the border of Mississippi, or I should say Alabama and Florida right there between Mobile and Pensacola, Eglin Air Force Base right there. And that has been trending on the model a couple times. The Zero Z rendition had it going into very southernmost Texas, upper Mexico. And then yesterday while I was at the beach, I was taking a look at the 12Z and the 12Z had a thing coming right up over Florida. So the key to that is going to be this pattern here. When we go back and forth from that negative to positive and negative PNA, Pacific North American Oscillation. Now, I do think the model is being a little too zealous in progressing that trough and building ridging back in, which is why the last couple runs of the Euro have been back and forth windshield wiping, which is to be expected. We want to see that happen because we don't even have anything on the board, and it's not going to be on the board until we get past the June 1st time frame. So lots of time to watch this, but I wanted to get this video out there to you all because... It may not be happening just yet, but it definitely seems like it's a signal worth tracking, and it might be happening after all. And that's something we've been brainstorming here on the Weather Center since January and February, maybe even into March during some of our long-range tropical discussions. Sloppy tropical storm to start the season off, possibly moving into the Gulf and hitting the southeast United States. But we'll wait and see. We're not going to make any preliminary predictions of that nature. All I know now is we've been on the money, and we're, we're going to keep tracking this as we go over the next five to seven days. We've been pinpointing June 4th, June 5th to be that entryway for things to start to pick up on a more promising signal, and we're starting to see it, and we're still about 10 days away from that, so lots of time to get ahead of it. So thank you very much for watching. I know this is a very raw, unedited video. I do apologize that the quality seems a little low. Again, I literally, no kidding, just walked in the door. This is exactly what I drove home in. I'm still very burnt. I got to go get a shower in because I am hurting, and I need some aloe vera 
<laughs> really fast. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments section down below. Again, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I'm going to bring you all the latest, reliable, and accurate, timely tropical weather information as we rock through the upcoming hurricane season. It's crazy to say we're already tracking what looks to be a legitimate signal, not just a phantom storm, a legitimate signal, and it's May 25th, 2025. we got a little bit more to go, and then the calendar will officially say it's game time. Hold on to your butts. Thank you all for watching. I hope we had a phenomenal Memorial Day weekend. We'll talk to you again very soon. I'm probably going to do a real live stream tomorrow night, so I hope to see you there. But until then, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.